If you're at Utah or a Baylor or an Oklahoma State, if you're a BYU, a Big 12 member, how should you feel about this conference further expansion and the existence of this league as a whole? This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Big 12. I'm Drake Toll from America's number one Big 12 podcast, Locked On Big 12. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Today, I joined JT Wistrasil of Locked On Youth to talk about individual teams. How should you feel about all this expansion talk? How does it affect you? And where is the Big 12 going? How fast is the Big 12 going? And can we close the gap between this league, the SEC, and the Big 10? It's possible. It's possible. Bear with me. Let's do it. If we did see the ACC implode, no one wants to be, and I'm sorry to say this, but no one wants to be Oregon State and Washington State. So that's why I think expansion gets really interesting. But as for is it a good thing, I'm going to always say yes, because I do think that it gives the conference more strength. If you're you're not going to expand just for the sake of expanding, you're going to add quality teams like a North Carolina or whoever. Now, I know uh, some of you are probably Wait, thinking, wait, wait. Let me pause you there. The okay, ACC... Yeah, did expand for the sake of expanding by adding Cal, Stanford, and SMU, which there were some contract things. And the reason they did that was so they didn't have enough teams to vote their way out of the ACC, and they could also keep a TV contract. But I, let me add in there, there are Go. ways to add teams that don't necessarily bring you ex- exponential revenue. Continue. Sorry, JT. That's true. It's true. And I, that's a good point. I think I was looking at it before why I would be oh, down for it for Utah is if you're adding teams that have just bigger brand power. I mentioned North Carolina or some of these other ones that are in there. It just, I think it makes you stronger. If it's like, oh, you got a North Carolina win on your resume. I think that's a great thing. So that's where I am going to be for expansion because while the big 12 and the SEC, or excuse me, the big 10 and SEC are going to continue to load up in that way, realignment is becoming an arms race. The big 12 should want to get as strong too. And the stronger the conferences, the stronger Utah would be then too. I I think so. That is a way to look at expansion from a Big 12 point of view. As a Big 12 analyst, and if you are a fan of a team in the Big 12, you should like expansion because of what it has brought this conference and what it will continue to bring this conference. Now, look, I get it. Oklahoma State and Oklahoma aren't going to play anymore. Texas Tech and Texas aren't going to play anymore. You're going to lose some of those foundational rivalries, but... You already didn't like those guys anyway, and those fan bases were insufferable to begin with. And if we're really honest with ourselves, those teams, the other teams that aren't Texas and Oklahoma, didn't win as much historically as Texas and Oklahoma in the Big 12. So you get rid of those two brands. And now what you do is you've created with Utah and Arizona, Arizona State and Colorado, this brand new Big 12 Western look and If you're a Utah fan specifically, or BYU, or Colorado, it might sound odd that this league is looking east, but I can tell you this, for West Virginia fans, for UCF fans, Cincinnati, if we go to Iowa State, those guys have been waiting for something to happen out east. West Virginia fans don't have a single game they can drive to in conference play. So as we've talked about how regionality has has gone to the wayside in expansion, West Virginia has been suffering that for over a decade now. They're the ones that you get to complain about that. So from a Big 12 standpoint, I think it's nothing but good if we're talking about a Louisville, a Pitt, uh, if we're lucky, a Miami or a UNC or Virginia in this conference. And if you're Dennis Dodds, emergency plan that he included in an article a couple of weeks a weeks ago a florida state and clemson are somehow in the conversation too yeah and that would be a huge game changer to add programs like that and i do think it makes some sense if you are clemson or florida state to want to do that because you would look at yourselves and go we are the premier brands in the big 12 you know that's how they would perceive themselves if they joined the mm-hmm. conference so that's where it maybe they it's, have a chance and to they, add would, the, they would be correct they would be correct yes, that that is be. Those two brands would replace what sure. Texas and Oklahoma were. And I, I'll, I'll throw in a caveat here because somebody is screaming at their Bluetooth speaker or phone or, or car right now saying, there's no way those two teams would ever go. The only emergency scenario in which those two squads are left to the Big 12 is where ESPN relegates them there or places them in the conference. Make no mistake, it is the TV deals, the the TV companies that pick and play what these schools do because that's where the money is. And, and money certainly talks. 
It does. And to your point also about the fan who was maybe screaming at us about that, I think that he also would have said, as all of us probably said 10 years ago, Texas and Oklahoma aren't going to then oh, leave yeah, the Big yeah. 12 for the SEC. Yeah. And now the Big 10 has the four prominent Pac-12 schools. It's just a crazy state of conference realignment and things rapidly change quickly. I mean, Drake, I'll ask you, how soon do you think it, it does feel like I know the contract seems pretty stiff. I yeah. think Clemson and Florida State are going to find a way out of it. How close do you think we are to seeing some form of the next big conference realignment shakeup? I'll tell you this. I'm not talking to the attorneys that are inside the court battles between Clemson, Florida State, and the ACC. No, you're but talking I, to, actually, Drake, you're talking to John Cena. So Yeah, yeah I, I, those guys are living <laughs> down. But those those entities, the attorneys, in I, I don't need those sources because so much of this has become public recently. And, and what that is, what has become public, is the lawsuit itself. Why Florida State, why Clemson are suing. And the big thing that I circle is a date in the grant of rights that is, is buried in 2025 where ESPN can decide that, hey, after 2027, we're cutting off the ACC. We don't want anything to do with that conference. Originally, these schools were all under the impression they had a TV contract through 2036. When they broke out that sealed grant of rights, it said the opposite, that for those nine years between 2027 and 2036, nothing is guaranteed. And ESPN in 2025 can opt out as early as that 2027 year. Uh, the only other weird, I mean, that this is a complete expedition of the process is Right now, Cal, Stanford, and SMU are not members of the ACC. They haven't officially joined that conference yet. If from a legal standpoint, Florida State can win their way out of this conference before June 30th, pay their way. If there is some way, and I, it's not impossible. Every time we say the word impossible in expansion, it's a misnomer. It is not impossible for these two schools to have completely exited that league by June 30th. And as we know... That those three teams they added backfilled the conference so that ESPN couldn't renegotiate a contract if a couple teams left. Well, if those three teams aren't in your conference and teams start leaving, then ESPN has the leeway to just say, you know what, we're done with your league. And and JT, the fastest this could happen is by June thirtieth of this year, where ACC schools decide we want out, we'll play independent for a year, then go from there. It's amazing the timeline of all of this. Oh, Let's just crazy. look back a year ago. When San Diego State was going to become a member of the Pac-12, yeah, that when Utah like, was a Pac-12 team a year ago, exactly. Even when yeah. Utah was a Pac-12 team a year ago, but even like in the time, like we're like, oh, San Diego State's going to join the conference. There was rumors about it always falling apart still, but you still felt like, oh, they'll make it, oh. and then no, they did not, and now we're here in the Big Twelve. <laughs> Think about this too, and, and this is is not as as tight of a timeline, obviously, but. One one year ago, Utah was in the Pac-12, but even when it was announced they would be moving to the Big 12, it wasn't a a couple of years down the line they're going to do that. When, when it was BYU yeah. and Cincinnati, it was, hey, in 2023, we're going to integrate these uh -huh. teams. This was, Utah's going to be in the Big 12 next football season. We're about to do this. So th there really is no such thing as a set timeline anymore. These things can happen almost overnight. As Mark Harlan literally stood on the stage with Commissioner Klyakov two weeks before he then announced the conference is going there too. So absolute insanity. And it's going to be crazy to see what the next few months of conference realignment do end up holding overall. But so that's what we feel about expansion. But then the question is, is the Big 12 and then Utah by association in danger of falling behind because of some of the shakeups to the college football playoff with the Big 10 and SEC continuing to try to make changes to that format that benefit those conferences. That's where we're going to be diving into in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you all about one of the sponsors of today's episode of Locked On Utes and Locked On Big 12. It's our friends at Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA, Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to the, their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. You can get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply now 
for some stuff that you guys need to know about. Don't forget to go over to Robinhood. Financial LLC member is registered broker dealer. Robinhood IRA available for US customers in good standing. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. Investing involves risk, including losses. And a 3% match requires Robinhood gold for a one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. So make sure you guys head over to Robinhood today. Drake, when looking at how all of this is shaking out with the college football playoff and the reports of even further changing the format to soon a 14 team, there's been things floated around as much as auto bids three per conference, not one. So it's like, what are we even playing a conference championship game for? We're going to do three. It feels to me like the SEC and Big Ten are just trying to continue to separate themselves for the Big 12. And that is where it concerns me about this conference is that all the power does seem to be in the hands of the SEC and the Big Ten currently. For sure. That, that is the case with the college football playoff committee. It's been the case in expansion, going back to Texas and Oklahoma, leaving for the SEC and the Big Ten, getting brands such as Oregon, Washington, UCLA, and USC. And the revenue distribution, especially the college football playoff, shows you just how far behind the Big 12 is because the SEC and Big Ten are slated to make almost twice as much as our conference moving forward, and that's not good. So the question then becomes, how do you remedy that? What can the Big 12 do to stay relevant? And Key one, this is the reason we have the conversation so often about the ACC is because key number one, to the Big 12 thriving and, and not just thriving, but honestly staying alive in an era of college football that is so money centric and is moving toward the Big Ten and the SEC is to take ACC squads. If Miami and Clemson and Florida State and UNC and Virginia are all land in the SEC or the the Big Ten, because we already think the Florida State and Clemson are going to do so. If all those entities are gone from the Big 12's grasp, nothing shrunk. There was no gap that was that was taken away. The Big 12 is even further behind where the two mega conferences are. And in that event, it's the equivalent of what the Big 12 was compared to the Sun Belt. Well, now you're just the Sun Belt compared to the SEC. And, and, And that is not what this conference wants moving forward because at some point, your most valuable entities in any given year, it could be a Utah, it could be a TCU. It's typically the teams that win on a consistent level, especially public state schools. When that squad starts taking wins and winning 10 games a year and they become a valuable brand, someone's going to scoop them up. I make this case all the time. I will make it on every show that I have the opportunity to do so. 15 years ago, Clemson was behind Bowling Green in football revenue. Why? Because they didn't win. No one cared. They didn't have a brand. They spent a decade winning national championships and going to the college football playoff. And that's what created them as a power in this sport. If Utah spends the next decade winning two national championships and going to multiple college football playoffs, you would love that. And the SEC and Big Ten would love that. The college football playoff would award that with money. And that's what everybody wants. So the Big 12 steps to staying relevant and closing that gap. Take the ACC teams you can get that make you more valuable. Sorry, Boston College and Syracuse and Wake Forest. That is not you. But an NC State, a Louisville, a Virginia, a Miami, each have a respective value within their own right that makes the Big 12 even better. Take those and start winning championships. Start winning in the playoff. And then the Big 12 closes that gap. Because right now, ESPN and the Big 12 are happy with one another. we got to keep that going, too. You have to keep it going. And what's nice is I do think this year is an opportunity where they will continue to be happy for each other. I expect Utah to be one of the best teams. I think Oklahoma State's still going to be very good this coming season. I think I've said before, I think Colorado will still will be good this year. I don't know how good. I think they will be better, though. They're going to dry out balls because it's Deion Sanders, too. So all of those things have a lot of value getting in on those games in action. And you mentioned it wherever Miami goes, because I still believe eventually Miami will be back. Will they be a national contender? I mean, they should be eventually but who who knows i'll get to that point but if you can get a sleeping giant like that i mean that's what SM, smu is not a sleeping giant anymore but there was a lot of value and, and i felt like an adding an smu for a while just because of the potential of having access to the dallas area like that mm-hmm. so there's still potential to be ex- excitement in there and there's a lot of fun brand and opportunities to see if you get matched up with i mean the thought of a utah playing a miami the fight for who has the real you utah does this yeah. one miami yeah. does this one like there's little stupid things like that that we 
love about college sports like that would make me exciting. But what doesn't make me exciting, and this isn't even as much to do with this topic as it pertains to the Big 12 stuff, but I just think it's really disappointing that we could move to such a non-competitive standpoint that we'd give three auto bids and completely re devalue a conference championship game. I, I just think that idea is ludicrous, Drake. Yeah, from that point of view, when we start talking about teams that have access to a playoff that are are judged by what conference you're in, then the gap goes from a gap to a chasm, and at that point, you're you're beyond. I mean, there, there's nothing else you can do. So the the single auto bid for your league is something that I'm a proponent of. Obviously, being a Big Twelve guy, and my whole deal, it's Brett Yormark, same thing. Is hey, give this a few years, and when we reevaluate with this, there's this look in clause the college football playoff added that says. In a few years, we'll look and see how every conference has expanded, how you've done a realignment, and then we'll realign how we do this process from a revenue standpoint and likely from who gets in and what auto bid format. So now again, it all goes back to expansion. Again, the Big 12 poach this or poach that because I get it, JT. It's a stupid idea to me too. A team getting three auto bids, just it, it doesn't register in my brain. But if it was the Big 12 getting it, I probably wouldn't be yeah. near as upset. I'm just, I'm trying to hold off as long as I can and wait yeah. for the Big 12 to scoop up ACC squads so they can get a fair uh, a fair spot at the table. You're right in terms of, look, if they're going to get auto bids, then everyone should get auto bids. I have a hard time believing they would agree to that because they want to keep all the power in that oh, situation. Yeah. But you're right. If they were able to do that, that would make it better, too. And I'm someone who looks forward to conference championship weekends. So I think that's where the bummer of that would be as well. But the nice thing is the Big 12 will continue to have that, too. I'm interested to see how, you know, how much viewership wise, maybe the Big 12 can, if the SEC and the Big Ten, they have the biggest brands, obviously. I wonder if at all, just like this villain perception that they could develop, if they are responsible for the downfall of the sport like that. I wonder if just people, some people would tune out of their games. I don't think they would that drastically, but it is kind of just an interesting thought. Like if they were the ones responsible for, would people stop supporting them a little bit? But it probably is more so to the thing of like we've seen in the past people do certain things and they say, I'm never going to watch again. And then they still end up and, watching them. <laughs> it's still something to wonder about just how these actions and the fact that those two conferences could just dis destroy the foundation of a sport we love. In some ways, it's already crumbled a little bit, but still holding its balance. It's just once again, it's just wild to be talking about all the various things we've already touched on here. Drake, all this stuff seems like it should be a dream and a fantasy. And instead, in a lot of ways, it could be a near reality. JT, you're on Locked On Big 12 right now. Like yes. A year ago, it wasn't a thing. You That's know? true. <laughs> a year ago, there was no reason yeah. for you to be on this show. That's that, a good point. That, that is the reality we're in. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a strange one and it'll be interesting to see. And, you know, you mentioned some interesting things there, Drake, about how we've been talking a lot about football, right? Yeah. But one thing that would be fascinating is adding Miami basketball. They just made a final four run last year. Don't ask how they did this year. This year wasn't yeah. very good, but last year, crazy things. NC state currently in the final four shout out DJ Burns. He's a legend. How about another one? Now this would be an interesting where their brand would kind of add up because football, they're not great, but basketball, they are the brand. How about a Duke? You want to add Duke to the big 12 already the best basketball conference, at least as it relates to the regular season. I don't have a final four team in right now. That could be crazy because speaking of the big 12, not having a final four, and we got to talk about a big 12 basketball is overrated. Utah is going to be heading there hey technically utah was the last big 12 team remaining stop next <laughs> next shout out the nit shout out the nit but we are going to be talking about if the big 12 was overrated in basketball and just in general because it's another year in which they weren't able to crack the final four that we will be diving into in one moment but first I want to talk to you all about our friends at game time game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of major league baseball which makes getting tickets even faster and easier prices on the game time app actually go down the closer you get to first pitch you can pick out any specific game or matchup you'd love to attend and there are so many fantastic ones out there and so many great features about the game time app whether it's those last minute tickets flash deals zone deals I, my personal favorite is the view from your seat it allows you to know exactly what kind of a vantage point you'll be sitting in so you know what kind of a deal you'll be getting they also have their low price guarantee game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference if you find seats for tickets what i think is fantastic your purchase is also covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticket industry and you can save up to 60 percent off buying last minute tickets for sports comedy 
theater events near you and so much more so make sure you guys take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time you can download the game time app create an account and use code locked on college for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-c-o-l-l-e-g with a capital l of locked capital o and o and capital c in college for 20 dollars off download the game time app today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed drake the Big 12 had a really strong regular season, but it did not go to the fruition how they'd hoped in the tournament. Unfortunately, Houston dealt with that injury and weren't able to keep the momentum that they had hoped that they were you happy. Just, let's just cut to the chase here. Were you happy when BYU lost? When you saw that? When you saw them lose to Duquesne okay. in game two? Yes, but I also used to live in Akron, so I was very happy for Keith Dambrot and Duquesne. So it does go in two folds. Don't think it's all complete BYU hate. Shout out Keith Dambrot. I did want to see them get it done too, but I was happy. It's BYU. I get it. You know, like if your team didn't make the tournament, but your rival just lost to Duquesne, you can still laugh. I will give that to you. Yep. Yeah, it was not a not the most joyous end of the season for Utah men's basketball, even though they were still going in the NIT by the time we're recording this. They did lose to Indiana State, but it does pose a question, Drake, because the Big 12 underperformed in the tournament. Is Big 12 basketball overrated? No, Big 12 basketball is not overrated because the analytics are so strong with the conference. The numbers back it up. This isn't a oh, I think the Big 12 is the best conference in college basketball. You could argue the Mountain West was flirting with five or six teams that could have gotten into March, and the ACC wasn't, and the Pac-12 wasn't. There are conferences who had such a bad regular season who actually showed up in the postseason. The Big 12 wasn't one of those. They were the opposite, but the analytics, the numbers would tell you this conference is the best conference in America. There were 10 teams in the top 40 at shot quality. Same goes for Ken Palm and Nett. The metrics love the league, but it, because it, it was a league that had teams consistently in the top 25 and and consistent. I think every almost every Big 12 team spent at least a moment of this season thinking, hey, wait a second, we might make it to March. 12 of the 14 at the very least did. And that says a lot about the league. And what happens is you get to March and things are almost a coin flip. There's a yeah. reason, JT. This is a wild, this is a wild way to put this, but I need you to bear with me here. Most years you have that random Florida Gulf Coast or a Yale or or a, a St. Peter's NC or NC State or an FDU or NC State. And at some point, almost always, that team reaches the Sweet 16 or Elite 8 and gets blown out by somebody else because the luck runs out. The coin stops flipping in their direction. It's parity. It's parity. All, all over the entire... It's, it's, it's impossible to judge a conference in a single elimination format. It's not even just the matchup. Like, oh, well, your league didn't match up well against the Big E. No, it's not that. Don't even dig that deep. Just dig in the fact that sometimes a very far inferior team wins in March. St. Peter's was not better than Kentucky. Their win, their win against Kentucky doesn't make the SEC an awful basketball conference. doesn't make them the equivalent of the SOCON or whatever St. Peter's is in. It's a single elimination, parity-filled format. And in that case, I don't think you can judge the strength of a conference because it truly is where the coin flips in so many of these matchups. You're absolutely right. I mean, NC State, if, free throw, if a free throw is made and a three doesn't get banked in, their coach yeah. is probably fired. And they're nowhere near the Correct. position that they're currently in the final Correct. four, which is insanity. And also, look, I, I know a member of the committee. I've interviewed him on my own show. I call him dad. So I know I've talked with him and interviewed him on the show, as I mentioned, about how this process works. And of course, you're just going to go on what this year has done and what the data says, because you can't be like, well, do we really want to see a Baylor this high when they have under when they haven't made it back in a while? Like, that's not how this works. All you can judge them is based on what they did this year and all of those Big 12 teams, because the Big 12 was a regular season. And gauntlet and i feel bad like we mentioned houston and there are other couple other teams too drake that they dealt with some bad injury luck as well and the tournament is just a, such a wild and crazy conundrum whenever it does occur so it's just one of those things where it wasn't the big 12's year for sure but you can't say it was overrated because in the regular season they were fantastic it just wasn't their day on some of those nights they didn't have it on those days and that's unfortunate for them but i totally agree can't call it overrated 
No, you can. And you look at a Houston losing Jamal Shedd in that game. Obviously, I, I wouldn't make the case that Houston does win, but it's it's likely. You know, yeah, it's Kansas possible. Uh, lost one of their guys too. I just blank Kansas. on Kansas. You know, Hunter Dickinson is not a hundred percent, and Kevin McCullough doesn't play. Yep. And it just mm-hmm. in the end, they're relying on guys who had a hell of a win against Stanford and just didn't have it in the tank, especially in the second half of their round two game against Gonzaga. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm pointing it at conference contenders in Kansas and Houston who. Have been to final fours or a Baylor too, who lost, who lost Langston love. And those schools just got dealt a tough blow. Yeah. This they, they weren't ready for March when March rolled around and March waits for no one. So the way that I view it is, is yes, you, you got unlucky, but even again, I think it, it, I take away the, the, the luck thing. And I take away the, the, this team from this conference matches up poorly with that team. I take all that away to, at its base level, say March madness is just madness. It, it, there is no rhyme or reason to what happens. Yep, it's always crazy. And as you said, the Big 12 got unlucky. But us here at Locked On Utes, we got lucky because we get to talk, got to talk to you today. Drake, appreciate you making the time to hop on. And I know we're doing this as a crossover. So all you guys, you know where to follow Drake at. But if you're Locked On Utes normally, make sure you guys head over to Locked On Big 12. Check out everything Drake has going on over there. And ditto for Locked On Utes. Drake, always fun doing these with you. JT, go Utes. Go Utes. There we go. I'm clipping that. I'm, I'm going to use it. Hey, there we go. Oh, that's definitely getting saved. You, you shouldn't have done that. That's definitely getting saved. People will say it's fake. People will say it's Photoshop too, based on comments you've made in the past. <laughs> but I still love Cougar Tales. Exactly. Hey, Cougar Tales. I've actually never tried one. So maybe I'll have to don't, someday, don't do but don't I'm do sure. it. Okay. It's a rivalry. <laughs> no. it's a rivalry. <laughs> good point. Good point. I'll hold strong. I'll hold strong. That's going to do it for Locked On Utes and Locked On Big 12. We'll be coming at you guys soon with more great content. Thank you guys for listening to our show today. And we'll be back with you shortly.